Endowed with a large diversity of extraordinary landscapes, geographically cut off from the rest of the world, the island nicknamed the Grand Island has become somewhat of a natural reserve for mankind because of the countless unique species of plants and animals that are found only here. The Malagasy population is also exceptional because of the diversity of its origins. Indonesians, Polynesians, Arabs, Africans, and Europeans have fashioned a people that has managed to preserve its traditions and customs. There are a thousand ways to discover Madagascar. Our way will make us travel up and down the Grand Island in all its diversity, to the south, then to the north, starting with the capital, Tananarive. On one of the 12 sacred hills of the high plateau of Limern, the palace of Queen Ranaval towers above the city. A citadel for a thousand warriors in times long past, it has since been the site of the capital for hundreds of years. It's the markets that have always given the city its heartbeat. All the ethnic groups in the region seem to have gathered here, but the inhabitants of the capital are mostly Murns, originally from Indonesia. It is a place where all sorts of products are traded, from handicraft to agriculture, from clothes to mechanics. It is also the place where ideas are stirring. <laughs> the population groups intermingle as well, with folklore as the binding factor. These can be fairground shows, but also the highly valued theater performances of the Malagasy. There are over 100 theater companies in Madagascar. The Malagasy dancers and musicians have their regular meeting place at the foot of the palace. Between Murundav and Tuliar lies the Vez region. The Vez people consist of 8,000 fishermen. On board the balanced pirogues, they work along the coral reef. They have been sailors for generations, living in harmony with their environment, the Grand Lagoon. The Vez are a nomadic people who travel along the west coast during the 10 months of the dry season, looking for places where the fish are abundant. The camps are often extremely simple. The masts and sails of the canoes are all it takes to build a few tents around a fire. Salt. The most important trade currency collected by the people living on the coast, it is used for its taste as well as to conserve food. Murundav. Here you find some of the seven species of baobab that grow in Madagascar. This giant is sometimes called the bottle tree because of the shape of its trunk and the thousands of liters of water it can hold. In Africa nearby, where there are just two species of baobab, there is a legend that one day a devil took possession of one of these trees and in anger planted the roots in the air. That's why its African nickname is the upside down tree.
In this region, the land has always been in a battle with the sea, and kilometers of rich cultivated plains have been lost in the fight. The rains often turn roads into rivers, and taxis and trucks have a very hard time getting from one village to the other. Madagascar, which is truly a natural reserve for the entire planet, is home to thousands of endemic plant species, most of which have never been put on record. I bought a forest here. At the moment, I have about 40 hectares altogether. I harvest mostly euphorbia. I must have about 150 species here, some of which have not been put on record. I have a professor in Heidelberg who takes care of the diagnosis, mostly in Latin. After that, when the file has been set up, we suggest a name which is submitted to the University of Leicester in England that supervises the global list of names of all recorded plants. The rare and the exceptional are daily things here. Until recently, for example, this region was home to the largest known bird, the Epernis, whose eggs are conserved by collectors. It has the ability to lay some 200 eggs, whereas the ostrich only lays 20. And that is one of the curiosities of our country. In this part of the world, and only here, fishermen still catch colocants in their nets, the oldest fish still alive. Its origins date back 300 million years. Built on the site of the ancient trading post of Kusuk, which was thriving in the 1900s, Tuliar is the white city, built in the delta of the Onilai and Firinan rivers. <laughs> the ochre brickyard, birthplace of the future constructions in the region. <laughs> From Turiao to Murumbe, the vast coral barrier runs along the coast over a 250 kilometer distance. The Vez fishermen built their vessels with rosewood and a roof wood. They don't fish for just anything, only certain kinds of fish are taken. The others are considered as belonging to the ancestors, they are sacred. On the islands, the reserves permit the observation of rare species of birds. They are easily approached, but only to a certain point. Here in the Anakawa region, water is scarce and the people have to work miracles to gather the minimum daily requirement. Our water is salty these days, not just brackish anymore. For us, the women, it's hard to buy water. We would have to bring it all the way from Lunila. And drinking water is important for our health. We absolutely need drinking water. This doctor makes sure that the water problems are taken care of. The day comes to an end to the rhythm of a traditional Malagasy guitar. The trail now leads towards Ampani, where the herds of Angora goats supply the local craftsmen with mohair wool. It is used in particular to produce what makes the reputation of the region, carpets.
In the countryside, the expression of the mafal funerary art. On the walls, paintings recall the lives of the dead. On top of the tombs, the aruwal, sculpted wooden posts with geometrical patterns and topped with naive figures and scenes of everyday life. In the heart of the forest, in the southern part of the Grand Island, lies the Berenti Reserve. The mascot animal of Madagascar, the lemur, a remarkably intelligent animal. There are seven different species of this amazing animal in the Berenti region, five diurnal and two nocturnal. Some 30 species are on record on the island. Crocodiles, present in large numbers in the lakes and in certain rivers, are remote cousins of those living in the Nile in Egypt and in Sudan. In this exuberant natural environment, enormous sisal fields are one of the pillars of the local economy. The leaves of the plant, cut up and crushed, will become carbon fiber before being sun-dried and turned into rope, carpets, hats, and even wallpaper for residential housing. The South also has a few surprises in store sometimes. Thick clouds of crickets that suddenly sweep down onto the region. They destroy the vegetation, but create pleasure for the children, who after a miraculous harvest, grill and eat them. But for the farmers, it is a battle they have to fight without any effective weapons, even if the chameleons lend a strong helping hand. In the heart of the south, the Ishale Massif, a massif with landscapes straight out of science fiction or westerns. Enormous sandstone formations, mazes of canyons. This is sacred land where the mountain caves are often burial places. Erosion sometimes gives suggestive shapes to the rocks. The imagination of the people does the rest. That's how this passage got its name, Canyon of the Apes. A few kilometers away stands a formation that bears a resemblance to the queen.
On the doorway to the south lies a region with a craft industry that is known in particular for making the famous Antimur paper, made from mulberry bark and decorated with flowers and leaves. The technique was brought to Madagascar a long time ago, perhaps two to three hundred years. It was brought here by the Arabs, who had probably seen the production of paper in Japan. Anthemora paper is used for making albums, lampshades, or wall decorations. At the entrance to Ambalavo, vineyards provide a very decent wine production, in particular the Bitsileo wines. The capital of the Bitsileo region, Fianarantsu. Pierre Oman chose this region to observe his contemporaries. I don't care much for landscapes, more for people, especially their facial expressions. Expressions that have made him famous all over the world. On the hillsides and in the bottom of the valleys, the rice fields expose their green and yellow colors throughout the season. The Malagasy is said to be the biggest rice consumer in the world with an average of 135 kilos per person per year. To dry the rice, the Malagasy often scatter it across the roadsides or even in the middle of the roads, which are heated by the sun. Among the different shades of green that weave a carpet in the southern regions, tea adds its own touch to the palette. Ranomafan. In this animal reserve, the morning mists are reminders that there are hot springs in the area. Since 1991, this national park is one of the preferred observation sites of nature and its inhabitants. There are lots of researchers, and the lemurs all wear collars to make their observation easier. Towards the east coast is Mount Tsiafadzavun at 2,643 meters. It is the third highest peak in Madagascar. Between Tananarive and Tamatave, in the middle of a dense and humid forest, the Mantasu Reservoir Lake suddenly looms up. Built in 1937, it holds 110 million square meters of water surrounded by pine trees. A sudden difference in height between the 1,500 meters of the high grounds and the 100 meters of the intermediary plateau is the Mandrak Cliff with a hot and humid climate. Ideal conditions for the inhabitants of the Pereiras Reserve, snakes and chameleons. Fifty percent of all species of these little saurians that are alive on Earth are present in this reserve. Strange characters strayed out of prehistoric times with independently moving eyes that can rotate as much as 180 degrees. The specific vegetation of the virgin forest is dwindling. The authorities try their best to protect it. To that end, four national parks, 11 nature reserves, and 23 special reserves were created across the territory. 1.8% of the land on which the often endemic plants and animals live is not just watched over. It is actively studied in this giant laboratory. The populations of the reserves are the only ones to have free access. They practice traditional agriculture and fishing. 
Near the town of Andasi Bay, where the railroad track between Tananarev and Tamatave passes by, there is another treasure, the naturally crystallized carbon better known as graphite. The Analama Zutra Reserve is known here for the Indri Indri, the largest of the lemurs. Under the watchful eyes of passers-by with whom they seem to have a meeting every morning, they are busy recolonizing the reserve. Ten other lemur species live in this forest, situated at 100 kilometers from the capital. Despite the introduction of the reserves, the Malagasy forest is in danger. 80% of the massif has disappeared, and this process continues at a rate of between 200 and 300 hectares per year. The main culprit in the intensive deforestation is charcoal. It is, for all practical purposes, the only fuel the population has for cooking. In recent years, the Malagasy have become aware of the problem. NGOs are initiating programs to explain to the inhabitants what's at stake in this forest. Cultivating the land is done by way of burning here. That is not good. It damages the land. When one uproots a tree to serve its fuel, it can no longer hold on to soil furrowed by water, so the land becomes a desert. Along the roads that the French colonists traveled, we find raffia, stemming in part from the raffia palm and processed in small roadside villages. Harvest, production, and sales are concentrated in an area just a few kilometers long. Near the east coast, Bricaville, a tribute to Charles Bricca, one of the engineers who built the railroad between Tananarive and the east coast. At its feet, one of the large rivers. Its mouth, in the shape of a delta, joins one of the phenomena of this land, the Canal of Pangaland. 665 kilometers, of which 433 are navigable, separated from the Indian Ocean by a thin band of shoreline. The ribbon of water crosses lakes and canals in the middle of the virgin forest between Tamatave and Mananzar. The Nest of Dreams, one of the lakes where the traveler can make a stop at one of the immense beaches. Very near, villages built on the coastal band between canal and ocean. At the far end of the canal, Tamatave, the large open town on the Indian Ocean. When King Radam I arrived here for the first time, he dipped his finger in the ocean and cried out, Tomashin, it's salty. And that is the name the Malagasy still use. It is the most important port in the country. The majority of the merchandise that enters or leaves Madagascar transits through here. To the north, the road takes over from the river going back up along the coast all the way to Fool Point. It is a very popular holiday spot for the people of Tamatave. At the entrance to the village, a stopover for the bush taxis that travel towards the north, the Hoove Fort. It dates back to the beginning of the 19th century. It was built by the Murns, the people from the high plateau, after the coast was conquered by King Radam I. A few cable lengths from there lies the island of St. Mary. A former pirate hideout, then a deportation place for political prisoners, it's one of the most beautiful lagoons in Madagascar. To the south, the island of Nat derives its name from the Nato, a type of tree that was once used to build boats. Two dozen families live here. On the other side of the channel lies St. Mary, fishermen's villages where, like all over Madagascar, the dead have a prominent place. 
Their funerals reunite entire families for days on end in a joyful ambiance. These festivities are not farewell, but rather, till we meet again. Family and friends will pay at least three more visits to their dead, especially during Famadine, the turnaround. <laughs> to the rhythm of the chants of the congregation, the body of the deceased is wrapped in a fresh shroud. After bestowing gifts such as tobacco, alcohol and rice, the body is returned to its residence. Beyond the capital village, the creeks follow one another, sheltering villages and hotels. And from June to September, in the turquoise water of the lagoon, the same group of whales often comes to frolic in front of the beaches, under the watchful eye of Paul Martin, who has observed and listened to them for years. St. Marie. Marie is the only natural refuge there is between the Antarctic and the tropics. When one realizes that whales need warm water to reproduce, it's only logical that they should come to St. Marie. It's the only barrier that can protect them. A gracious ballet from these sea mammals, which can be over 20 meters long and weigh up to 45 tons. Back to the coast, flying over a bay that was one of the favorite stops for pirates in the 17th and 18th centuries. Over coral reefs, following what some call the Malagasy Riviera, we arrive at the mouth of the Mananar River in the town of Mananar. Far away from Tamatave, to which it is only connected by bad roads or rare aerial connections, the region lives around its marketplace, a showcase for abundant fish and prolific cultures. In the large baskets, seven different kinds of rice are on display for buyers. In the middle of the river lies a sanctuary island. It's one of the few remaining places to observe the ai ai, a nocturnal lemur, the rarest of species. There are just a few dozen left. The reason why? Deforestation combined with the fact that the Malagasy thought the Ai Ai incarnated ancestral spirits who disturbed their sleep. A fatal reputation. Their favorite food is the coconut. A hundred kilometers to the north, we find the three towns of Andape, Sambave, and Antala. They define the triangle of vanilla, cinnamon, and tropical fruits. It's also one of the sites of the shipbuilding industry. The boats here are built according to traditional methods using wood that Europeans consider to be precious. After working in the fields, the villagers in the Sambave region often get together at night to sing and dance. In the daytime, they pick the vanilla pods that are to be sent all over the world after a process of strict selection and conditioning. In the 1940s, this region supplied 50% of the global production. These days, it's still a very lucrative business. The vanilla trade has generated some of the largest fortunes on the Grand Island. The latest addition to the region's activities the coconut, used to make copra. Skillful grafting and spaying resulted in a coconut palm that is as productive as the Asian variety, but grows as fast as the West African one. The Malagasy geology also produces other phenomena, like the Tsing, rich coral rocks that are 400 million years old. The forest of sharp points, 40 meters high, was formed by calcium-rich soil that was originally underwater and was gradually eroded by the acidity of the streaming water.
At the doorstep to these strange landscapes, a few kilometers from the coast, there is a series of small islands. These are the Four Brothers, rocks just above the surface where the birds of the area take refuge. In the heart of these islands, the Mitsuyu Archipelago. Looking like a desert and ideal for two to three day camping trips, in touch with nature in its original state. Around here there is a lot of traffic. Ships shuttling between islands, cargo and fishing boats. We are in a world where connections by sea are essential and where fishery is the driving force of the economy. The process is simple. After a day's work, the fishermen take refuge on the small islands. They settle there and treat the fish by either drying or smoking it. On the drying sheds, we see clams and tuna, which are abundant in the area, but also shark fins sold for a lot of money to the Japanese. The center of attention in this multitude of islands is Nozi Bay, the big island or island of perfumes. Apart from the marketplace in the capital of Hellville, the local specialty is embroidery with the Richelieu stitch, an openwork stitch used for making tablecloths, skirts, and women's blouses. Around the courtyard, the colonial residences are home these days to the local authorities and the head offices of companies. Overlooking the island are Mount Paso and its lake. Legends say that the crocodiles that live in the Malagasy lakes, many of which are sacred, are local people transformed after bad deeds. Besides fishery, the main means of income here are sugarcane and tourism. A few minutes away by Pirogue is Nozikombe, where a large part of the islanders make a living with handicrafts. As an extra, there are the pranks of the lemurs. Here, the Makis are not at all impressed by the visitors, whom they seduce into giving them bananas. Jumping into space, we fly over the Bay of Russians, where a squadron belonging to the Tsar sought refuge during a cyclone. Nosy Range is yet another refuge. Here, after traveling hundreds of kilometers, giant sea turtles lay their eggs. Every year they find their way back here with no hesitation. With their last bit of strength, they climb up the slopes of the beaches and lay their eggs. These islands let us stumble upon the west coast of Madagascar. Direction Majanga, after flying over one of the most barren areas. The forest has practically disappeared here, but the coastline is still very appealing. Flying is the only way to discover this part of the Grand Island rapidly. Unusual sights like this lavac a natural phenomenon akin to the Tsing, the age-old pointy coral rocks. Majunga, the capital of the kingdom of the Sakalavis of Boina, lies in the heart of this desert region.
Majunga means city of flowers. It is also known for its famous baobab, the Duan Manungariv, 700 years old and a sacred place for the cult of the Sakalaves of Boina. The city, with Arab and Indian influences, is situated on the shores of the Betsibuk River. The city is Madagascar's second largest port. It has always been a meeting point for the great navigators looking for riches on the route to India. In those days, Indian and Arab trading posts were established, and their imprints can still be found. At a small distance from the caves, we find the houses of the Arab merchants with finely carved facades and the sculpted doors of the buildings of the Indian merchants. It is a cosmopolitan capital where the faithful of every religion have their own neighborhood. The rickshaw, a relic of days gone by, provides a fast way to tour the city. But it's the Zebu that takes us out of Majunga over the road that leads towards the high plateaus of Limerne. In the surrounding savannas, we find caves such as these at Anzui Bay. In French colonial times, the families from Majunga, who were looking for coolness, would come to dance and eat here on the weekends. The road towards Tananariv leads through small towns. In the heart of the forests and rice fields, there are genuine trading posts, like those of the last century. All kinds of merchandise can be found here, especially the Vang Vang, the famous small silver Malagasy bracelets. At more than 100 kilometers from the Majunga Delta, the Betsy book is still impressive. At the height of Mavetanan, its course takes on a furious appearance. Heavy rainfall can add even more. Tiruno Mandid is one of the most important Zebu markets of the Grand Island. The herds come together here every Thursday and Friday, sometimes from hundreds of kilometers away. Tiruno Mandid, the market town. The immense cathedral overlooks the shopping streets, where people go to spend the money made in the cattle trade. It's also the domain of the blacksmiths. They work steel, but also tin they get from tin cans, used by craftsmen to make dozens of objects, ranging from kerosene lamps to watering cans. In the surrounding area, the pastures make us forget the dryness of the Majunga region. Ancient volcanoes nowadays make their presence known discreetly in the shape of small geysers. Madagascar, a small continent endowed with exceptional natural life, is home to evidence of worlds that have disappeared elsewhere. Beyond the upheavals of history, 
It is without a doubt the 18 different ethnic groups and their inborn sense of tolerance that allows the Grand Island to be an extraordinary country. Its main richness remains a fabulous heritage of plants, animals, and humanity. Thank mm -hmm. you.